Right, guys, welcome back. This is the final question on this paper one, and it is a 16 mark essay on defining abnormality. Okay, it's an application essay, and it is specifically about failure to function adequately and deviation from ideal mental health. So, just before we get started, we have application essay, which means that we have six, four, six in terms of our marks okay so that's a six mark outline just a standard with any 16 mark essay a four mark application section and then a six mark evaluation section okay so you can see my plan on the screen now failure to function adequately is when somebody can't cope with the demands of everyday life and deviation from ideal mental health was put forward by Jehoda. it was a criteria of ideal mental health and the absence of that criteria is what was considered abnormal. Okay, I'm only going to do two evaluation points, and they're both going to be limitations. Bearing in mind this question is outline and evaluate, so there's no need for me to have strengths if I don't want them. Obviously, if the question had been a discuss question, then that would be a different story. I'm going to do two limitations. One of them is that context is important for failure to function adequately. And the second one is going to be a culture bias point for deviation from ideal mental health. Now, just quickly before we start, a mistake that I've seen quite a lot on this essay in the past is that people tend to write very little for the outline. OK, and the reason for that is because people tend to have these one line descriptions of what each of the definitions are and they think that once they've written that one line they've accurately and adequately outlined that definition of abnormality okay so it's not enough to say failure to function adequately is when somebody can't cope with the demands of everyday life okay there are other things to say there are names to include there are examples to give okay you still have to write six marks worth of outline which equates to about 150 words, 175 words, something along those lines. Okay, It is only a rough guide, but that's roughly what you should be writing. So let's have a look at this final essay. So we will start with failure to function adequately. Okay, So we've got the standard definition is when people can no longer cope with the demands of everyday life. Okay, there's your first mark. Okay, but like I said, there is more to say. So we have Rosenhan and Seligman who pointed out specific indicators that might suggest somebody's failing to function. There are also more generic symptoms as well, um, which might include things like an inability to maintain basic levels of hygiene, maintain friendships or relationships, or hold down a job. Right. I'm going to do my first little bit of application. It's only a short bit for this one. So Rob is unable to complete his homework properly, which is a regular part of being a student. And he's also distracted in his day to day and can't keep things tidy. OK, both of those things are things that you would imagine that somebody who is coping with day to day life would be able to do. And that suggests that he is failing to function because he is failing to cope with the demands of his everyday life. Right, moving on. So this outline is slightly shorter than the last outline, but that doesn't matter. They balance each other out quite nicely. So deviation from ideal mental health is a definition proposed by Jehoda. So get a name in there. You don't have to put a date. Obviously, dates add detail. Um, so if you know the date, then that's great. I've left it out just to kind of highlight that you don't need it necessarily to still produce a good essay. OK, now Jehoda produced a list of traits that make up ideal mental health and suggested that people who deviate from the list are abnormal. All right. And then your third little bit of information that you might want to put into this outline are characteristics that make up ideal mental health. Now, obviously, there are like nine characteristics or nine traits on this list. If you know all nine, by all means, put them in, but you don't have to. OK, the ones that I've put in, I've strategically put in because they're the ones that I'm going to be talking about for Rob. 
um, except for the independent of others. That was just an extra one that I added in. Right, here's my next little bit of application. So Rob is currently not meeting all of Jehovah's criteria of ideal mental health. So let's dive into why not. He feels frightened because of the voices that he hears in his head, which suggests that he does not have an accurate perception of reality, and he's also not free from distress. Okay, He's also worried about his chances of going to university, which means that he's currently not in the position to self-actualize. Okay, Therefore, for all of these reasons, Rob is deviating from ideal mental health. Okay, now I will just say at this point as well, there are other ways that you could apply. So some of the things that I had for failure to function adequately would have also worked for deviation from ideal mental health, but this is just the way that I did it. All right, and then my two evaluation points. Okay, so we've got the first little evaluation point, first little limitation, which is that it's culture biased. Okay, so that is for deviation from ideal mental health. It's very much biased towards Western norms, um, and those norms or the characteristics might not necessarily be uh, seen as normal in other cultures. Okay, so you then give an example self actualization might be seen as self indulgent in collectivist cultures. And then my second one is a slightly longer one because I've gone into a little bit more detail with a counterpoint. So you've got failure to function adequately fails to recognize that there are some situations where failing to cope is a rational response. For example, a bereavement or a breakdown of a relationship. Okay, so why is this a problem? Well, because labeling somebody as abnormal in these circumstances might be unfair, especially as there are potentially long-term consequences of giving somebody a label like that. Okay, but then I've gone into a little bit of a counterpoint. So you've got a however, that being said, just because the cause is clear and the response is understandable doesn't change the fact that they are failing to function. Okay, so what is my conclusion from that? Well, it's important that factors such as context, symptom severity, and duration are taken into account before using this definition to determine whether or not somebody should be classed as abnormal. Okay? And that is the final question done. I hope you've enjoyed this series of videos. If you have, let me know by hitting the like button. Thanks very much for watching. I hope it's all made sense, and I will see you in the next one.